what's going on everybody got another video here for you today we are going to prove that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x so before we get to that we have got to prove a couple of other things first now you already know you probably already know we're going to prove two limits you probably already know the two limits but we're going to prove them anyway okay all right so let's let's do this let's let's draw a circle okay let's see if i can draw that a little bit better that looks a little better all right so we've got a circle that's the center of the circle all right now let's erase that all right let's move that up there so we have let's label this o for the center let's label this b let's label this c we've got a point here we'll call that d and let's let's drop a line here and call that point a here's theta and we'll label this right here the radius okay all right so what we're going to do is we are going to find the area of this triangle OAD we're going to find the area of this sector right here of the circle and we're going to find the area of this triangle OBC okay all right so a few things we know we know that tangent theta is equal to line CB over R okay so remember tangent is opposite over adjacent so it's the opposite line over the adjacent now i know this is line ob but it's also r we labeled that the radius that is the radius of the circle also and so this tells us that cb is equal to r times tangent theta we're going to have to use that in a little bit and then we have sine theta is equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So AD over R. And so that tells us that AD is equal to R times sine theta. All right. So now let's look and let's find the area of triangle O, B, D. O, B, and then D, this triangle here, O, B, D. So the area is what? Half the base, the base is R, times the height. Well, what's the height? Well, that's the line AD. Well, what does AD equal? It equals R sine theta. R sine theta. So the area of triangle OBD is one half R squared sine theta. All right. Now, Let's find the area. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I am going to take this and I'm going to move it right here. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it up some. So we'll have enough room. All right. Now let's look at the area of sector O 
B, D. So that's this sector here, right here. That's that sector. So the area of that sector is one half the radius squared times theta. Okay, that's the area of a sector of a circle. And then we need the area of triangle O, B, C. Well, that's half the base, so that's one half R times the height. Well, what is the length of BC or CB? The length of CB is R times tangent theta. And so the area of triangle OBC is one half R squared times tangent theta. All right. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So you would agree that this area right here is less than the area of that sector, which is less than the area of that triangle. So it's showing that this, the area of this triangle, OBD, is less than the area of the sector of the circle which is less than the area of this bigger triangle here. So that's going to give us one half r squared sine theta is less than one half r squared theta, which is less than one half r squared tangent theta. All right. So hopefully everybody agrees on the inequality we've got here. All right, so notice I can divide everything by one half r squared, and that's going to leave me with sine theta less than theta less than, and tangent theta, I'm going to write that as sine theta over cosine theta. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply everything by one over sine theta and that's going to give me one is less than theta over sine theta which is less than one over cosine theta all right so what i'm wanting to prove is the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is equal to zero. That's what I'm wanting to prove. So notice here in the middle, I have theta over sine theta. So I need to flip that. So I need to take the reciprocal of each term. So if I take the reciprocal of one, I just get one. And then that's greater than sine theta over theta, which is greater than cosine theta. All right, remember when you take the reciprocal, you reverse the inequality symbols. And so now let's write this as cosine theta is less than sine theta over theta, which is less than one. I'm just writing the smaller one first. So you got to keep, and you got to keep the inequality symbol pointing towards cosine. All right. And so look at this. Let's take the limit. Okay, let's take the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta. That equals cosine of zero, which is one. And then I have the limit as theta goes to zero of one is equal to one. So now we can say by the squeeze theorem, the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. All right, so we proved, we proved this limit right here. Okay, we're gonna need that in, in, doing, in find, doing the derivative, okay? 
The next limit we have to prove is we have to show that the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over theta is equal to zero. We need to show that. All right, so let's show that. So the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine theta minus one over theta. So how are we gonna do this? Well, well we're gonna multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. And so this is equal to the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine squared theta minus one over theta times cosine theta plus one. All right. Now, if you look at this part right here, look at cosine, let me do it in a different color. I'm gonna do my work up here. So cosine squared theta minus one is equal to negative one minus cosine theta, right? Factor out a negative one, it changes the sign in front of each. And that's cosine squared. So this is equal to negative. Now what's, minus, what's one minus cosine squared? Well, that's sine squared theta, right? So I can write this as the limit as theta goes to zero of negative sine squared theta over theta times cosine theta plus one. All right, now let's split these up. So that's negative limit theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta times the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over cosine theta plus one. So the sine squared, see I took the negative, pulled it out, and I put sine theta over theta, and I've got sine squared, so that's like having sine theta times sine theta, so I took the other sine theta and put it over here. Okay, well, what is this? Well, this is just what? That's negative one because we know this is one. We just proved that. So one times negative one is negative one. And then that's gonna be times, and then we plug the zero in, sine zero over cosine zero plus one which equals negative one times zero over one plus one, which we know that is just zero, okay? So we just proved this one, all right? So we proved these two limits, all right? And you're gonna see why now. All right, so the whole point here is we have f of x Say we have f of x equal sine, well, let's just use, let's do sine x. All right. And we want to show that the derivative show that that's equal to cosine x. All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna use what? The definition of the derivative. Remember, the de definition of derivative limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so that's gonna be the limit as h goes to zero. Now we're, f of x is sine x, so that's sine of x plus h minus f of x, which is sine x, all that over h. And so this is going to be the limit as h goes to zero. Now, what do we do here? Remember your sum and difference identities from trig. 
that's sine x whoop sine x times cosine h plus cosine x sine h so this right here is this sine x plus h all right and then i've got minus this sine x and this is all over h all right so we've got to do a little bit of rewriting here so i want to write this as the limit as h goes to zero of sine x cosine h minus sine x over h plus well and this let's do this one big thing plus cosine x sine h over h okay i just group this one and this one together see i did this minus this put that over h plus this over h and so now i've got the limit as h goes to zero okay as h goes to zero of sine x times cosine h minus one over h factored out of sine x plus and then this is we'll just leave this for right now all right all right so now let's write this limit as h goes to zero of sine x times cosine h minus one over h plus cosine x of sine h over h and so this is the limit as h goes to zero of sine x times the limit as h goes to zero of cosine h minus one over h plus the limit as h goes to zero of cosine x times the limit as h goes to zero of sine h over h all right so what do we get here well this is going to be what well the limit of sine x as h goes to zero well that's just sine x remember h is our variable See, so we're going as h goes to zero so this sine x is like a constant times and then if you remember we proved that that is equal to zero plus cosine x the limit of this of cosine x as h goes to zero is cosine x times and then if you remember we proved that that's one and so this is just cosine x so what did we do we proved that the derivative of sine x with respect to x is equal to cosine x and there's your proof all right so i hope you enjoyed that uh, if you ever wondered uh, how we got the derivative of sine x, well, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed it. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, and I will see y'all in the next one later.